Howdy, this will be a quick how-to video on manually adding offsets for uh, making a cut path for a plasma cutter using Inkscape. Most CAD programs will have a way to generate offsets, but none of them are perfect. And this is a way to sidestep any issues you might be having with yours by doing it manually in Inkscape. So I'll just go ahead and start with this vector that is ready to cut, but needs to have an offset path added to it. Uh, to preserve some of the detail on the letters and the antlers without fattening everything up by the cut width of the plasma cutter. Uh, I'm going to change the color on this so it's easier to see. So if you know the cut width of your plasma cutter, uh, you can add an offset in Inkscape by adding a stroke paint to your vector and converting that stroke paint into a path to be cut. So if you go to Object and click on f Fill and Stroke, you'll get these tabs. Uh, under Stroke Paint, select Solid Paint, and under Stroke Style, set the style to the width of your cut. In my case, that's going to be one and a half millimeters. You can see that's added as outline. Um, now, the easiest way to turn this into a cut path where you'll just cut what you see is to go to the stroke paint tab, set it to the same color as the fill by selecting this eyedropper and then clicking on the fill part of the vector and that'll change the outline to be the same color. Now to convert what you see into the cut line um, you can use the paint bucket tool when using that, zoom in as far as you can uh, because this works in pixel space and click anywhere in your vector to fill. Now if you see this happen, that's because the stroke paint is still set to fill and set to 1.5 millimeters, so just X that out for the vector you just made and you'll see, I'll change the color of this one, you'll see that there are actually two vectors here. There's the red one, which we just made, which is offset and then there's the gray one, which is the original. Now if I go to view, display mode, outline, you'll see that there are actually two lines here. One is the vector we just made, and one is the original vector. And you can see how it's, one is offset inside the other. Now it's not perfect. You'll see there's some deformity here and there and some of that is from uh, using the paint bucket fill because it'll do an approximation based on how big it is on screen. So if that matters to you, then another more time-consuming way to do this is to select the object that has the stroke paint that you added. And instead of using the paint bucket to path, stroke to path, and that'll convert the stroke into a vector. But the problem, what makes this one more time consuming, although more accurate, um, is that now if I go to the outline view, you can see that there's two lines here, and they're all part of the same vector. So I need to pick for each one, do I want the inside or do I want the outside of that outline. Fastest way to do that is to take this object and, sorry, take the path and break it apart. And now every individual line is selectable. So for this one I know I want the inside of the letters, so for each letter I'll select the outside line and delete it. And this can be pretty tricky. Now for the outside cut, 
outside line is the line you want to keep. So you'll select the inside line and delete that one. And this should give you a, uh, a cut path that's been offset by half of your cut width. Hope that helps, and thanks for watching.